heels and boom 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 Stan comes as we talked about once a week and uh, he's about 99 miles away from here <laughs> and, and I drove there and almost turned back around once I said yo I told you Marcus with me I said hey look we got about, about 10 more miles before I make change and change the direction. <laughs> <laughs> this 99 ain't for me. I, don't, I, don't, I barely need a garage. We're about to, uh, we're about to um, do some light puppy work. I'm gonna bring Bam Bam out. Couple things, guys, you keep asking me about an aggressive dog. I don't, I, we don't breed aggressive dogs. I don't want an aggressive dog. I don't want an aggressive phone call. I don't want anyone's children, child, person to be concerned with the pup they get from me now i'll be very clear so i reached out to the other and said hey can uh, my my brother come and see this woman she's buying one of her dogs can he come see the pups and to meet the mother and father i said the father's in jefferson city and zara's not nice <laughs> <laughs> i said we we don't have those kind of dogs we're like hey can we come hang out with the dogs ego don't want to hang out with you um tron will probably lick you to death but he, if you he had walked past you too, he's like, yo, you ain't not doing nothing? Leave me alone. <laughs> My dogs are working, they're on a regimen. They're on a regimen and we, we, we live and die by the code. And the code is work at its finest. I got another uh, another good question too. I saw I saw my bad. I posted a thing about vitamin D and someone said, hey, correct me if I'm wrong. I see Jamar's got the YouTube going, so you're gonna, I'll put this book up. Don't ask me about this book. <laughs> I'll put this book up. They said, correct me if I'm wrong, but dogs don't need the sun to synthesize vitamin D. It's like the great debate. It's like the great debate. Dogs have three layers of skin. You have the epidermis, hypodermis, and the dermis. And objectively, it's a fat-soluble vitamin, which means it sits in. Now, mind you, I'm not reading out the book, by the way. It's a fat value. It's a fat-soluble vitamin that sits in the skin. Well, where's what's, what part of the skin is fat? Adipose tissue is where the fat is. So the challenge is with chickens, cows, and various other things, unless they get the sun, the vitamin D isn't synthesized, which means it really never gets to the bone. Hmm. Interesting. So it's also believed they get into that. Even in this book, it says this. And I'll show you here. I'll flip this camera around so you can see with your own two eyes. Mind you guys, I'm not telling you everything. I'm not going to. The book will be in the episode. Let's see. Where's vitamin D? Yeah. So, known to humans as the sunshine vitamin and actually a hormone. So for us, it's even a hormone. Dogs and cats can't synthesize their own vitamin D from the sun as humans can. Even so, all animals need it for bone growth as it regulates the absorption of calcium and phosphorus by the body. This is why deficiency of vitamin D materials as bone joint issues, including rickets, but I'll materialize this to be clear, I'm tripping. I'm like holding the phone and trying to read at the same time looking over the phone. <laughs> but, but like others, vitamin D is vital for most areas of the body, including the eyes, heart, kidneys, glandular, nerves, systems, uh, systems, skin and teeth. So it says in the book objectively, the dogs don't need the sun to synthesize vitamin D. But why does everybody else? Why does a dog sit out and sunbathe? Why if I leave the dogs out here? I mean, I've literally left Cha-Cha out here for a little bit. She'll sit and you can leave the dogs out. She's in such a good state of being. And there's even the white dogs. A pie dog, a coach, Shah Dean Christian, he says, T-Fit, my dog got skin cancer. All he ever wanted to do was sit in the sun. I wonder why that is. So where there's science, if let's just say three out of four animals need the sun to synthesize vitamin D and over 15 plus years, my dogs have loved the sun and just sit there and chill. I understand science and I agree with it, but I'm also testing the theory because in fact, there's nothing in fact other than the fact you're going to die one day. So <laughs> my mom said, my mom used to say this. She said, baby, all I got to do is die and be black. Yeah, be black. That's it. Be black and die. And uh, I believe in the same thing. Well, everything else is just a matter of perspective. And again, I read the information. I'm literally somebody. Somebody say, hey, hey, um, what about this? Do you see all these notes? <laughs> I know where vitamins I could tell you about this. I know where all the pages are. I can literally go get another book, open the page, and show you where it's at. I read and read regularly a lot of info. Now, I repeat, if you want to uh, learn more about this stuff, I'll drop this particular book, which I've put in other things. Every book moving forward is an Easter egg. Don't ask me what books to read, because if you want to know that bad, you would have figured it out by now before I ever came along. So funny to me, that's, that's what's getting me. It's like, I'm torn between these two things. And one is, hey man, what book should I get? It's like, I mean, 
That's kind of hard to answer. Like, why are you asking me? Go, whatever you want to know. There's a lot of books out there in the world. All kinds of books. You probably need a business book first. And then the other part is, I've raised the bar. So what happens when the bar gets raised? Then it's like, it's a double-edged sword because you want people to know more and have the information. But the information's always already existed. For over 20 years, some of the books, as I told people, they're, they're as old as 1986. Specifically in genetics and all that other stuff. So at any hoot, Stan's gonna put us to matter of fact, let's let's talk to Stan for a second. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk to Stan for a second. Matter of fact, I'm gonna flip the camera around. So you guys always appreciate, matter of fact, for y'all that have been asking me training questions, I said, go follow I am Stan90 and ask him. I am not a dog trainer. But I've trained my dogs. Stan, oh what up, how, what up? how long you been training dogs, man? Uh it's going on seven years now. Seven years of dog training. What's the number one thing you learned about dog training? What's the hardest part you say? Patience. Ooh. Taking your time because everybody wants to expedite the process. Everybody wants to end as soon as they start versus building that dog for your lifestyle. And expedite for those people who don't understand just means you want to tell the dog sit and do it the first time. Yeah. And or, then or bite work. Yeah. Or anything. Oh God. Anything. And, um, and I don't know how to answer the question because somebody says, "Hey, what's a good way to get my dog to do protective work?" And I'm like this. Uh, I have no idea, my friend. Yeah. Well, your dogs do it, they sure do. But key word is they do it all the time. Mm -hmm. But they're still not doing it, that's the thing. Yeah, it's just like if, if somebody says, how do I get to the NBA? It's like, well, you shoot 100 free throws a day, this, 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 and you gotta put in the time. But you also have to have the natural ability. And if, you're still not gonna get there. Yeah, <laughs> it's a what, a 1% chance that you're gonna make it? I think it's less than that, man, because if you think about it, I did the numbers one time, I was just curious. <laughs> because objectively, they normally only give out about five scholarships at the collegiate level for every school for every state, there's at least two schools, a uh, university and a state school on top of whatever extra schools in there. So you turn around and the average state, we're talking about 100 colleges, five scholarships given away, 11 guys on, I don't think, how many guys is on a basketball team, do you know? Uh, about 11 to 15. Yeah, about 11 to 15 sitting on the bench and 30, 60 people go in the draft. And they've got almost what? 3%, which means 3 to 5 on average, if not more, are coming from overseas. So now you've got overseas <laughs> taking your draft opportunities with only two rounds of draft in the NBA. And if you ain't over 6'5", it lowers your level Oh down. my God, now your <laughs> chances is slim and none, and none is the only way you're going. So you go, what's the chances of you actually getting a dog to do protection work? I mean, it's, it's just... <laughs> And, and then you got to understand what level of protection work do you want? Do you want the creme de la creme or do you just want the basic stuff? And yeah, some people just realistic. want their dog to bark at the crib. Yeah. I just want them to bark and let me know somebody outside. Yeah. And if that's what you want to do, I mean, that's easy. You can get really any dog to do that. But what if somebody keeps coming? Now your dog needs to do some work. And if your dog doesn't have endurance, if your dog doesn't have confidence, it's not going to be able to do the job. And it all starts with you developing those things into the dog. Just like you see me with boots. Every day we're doing something. It's little rag work here, a little confidence building here. And all of that is going to build that dog into what I need him to be when he's 16 months to a year or two years old. Yeah, exactly, people. So when you ask me, hey, how to get my dog to do protection work, oh, Lord. <laughs> it, it, is, it is years of work. Years of work, bare minimum. Your dog's not even going to be grow, grow up until it's about three years old, realistically. So you turn around, Bam Bam's what, maybe going on six months in February? You turn around, he got years of work. Ego has years of work. I'm going to let Bam Bam out so they can do a little something. I'm going to give uh, Jamarcus my phone for Tipsy because uh, I got to watch out. <laughs> Look at this. Chew up the pig. I'm just sitting here for you. Acting like a prick. Get out of here. Come on. Got his little bone collar on. He's been after the play. Look, see? See that right there? What's he do? He come right out and get on that thing now. Get to work. He know what to do. <laughs> He's seen it already. <laughs> and, see at, that? and at this age, it's just like golden gloves. It's just like peewee. You're not gonna be doing a whole lot because they can't handle everything. But you're gonna introduce them to the stick hits and the kicks. See? He comes out. And y'all seen the videos with Ego where we can kick them and pull them and do everything else, but you have to develop that dog's confidence. Yeah. And he smells the hot dogs in my pocket too. <laughs> Don't be a bum. There you go. Good look. All, all that little stuff people go longer. Get his little wind. He's shaking like. 
you know, it was crazy. I don't know. They got over this fence with the ball in their mouth. I was like, how did he get over here? But these dogs are figuring stuff out. He on the sack. <laughs> he was like, at the cut. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm saying? We we talking about a six week old dog, a six month old dog, my bad, a little bit less, and Stan's already harassing me. And the dog's got no fear. <laughs> As I repeat, people, we don't have the same dogs for once. <laughs> we we don't. Can I get my dog? I breed for this right here. I breathe for this. That's this was intentional. <laughs> Very intentional. So imagine I got Ego, Bam Bam, eventually Zara's daughter at the house. I wouldn't come there if I was you. <laughs> It'll be a problem. I can guarantee you that. And Bam Bam's probably gonna be the chewiest. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, whoo. He a little hoss. Yeah, I know, man. He's gonna be a young man. Ugh. He getting thick too, any man. Yeah, he I picked him up early, and I go, goodness gracious, <laughs> goodness gracious, fat boy. Gotta do them shoulder presses. Yeah, <laughs> 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 people, we breeding to make better dogs so people can feel safe in their homes. So many other things, and it's a slow process, people. It's a slow process. No rush. Nobody can. You can't rush this. I know some of y'all. I got this dog. I'm like, look. I'm still got a time. Twenty years of work. We only a year in. <laughs> we only a year in. So any other advice you could give to some of these people who are interested in potentially just starting off the dog with doing some type of protection work? Um, build confidence. So it starts with, if your dog doesn't want to get on the stairs and all of that, your dog's not going to want to go in a fight. So it starts with building that bond and the relationship with you and the dog. Because again, if the dog doesn't like you, why is the dog going to defend you? <laughs> so it all starts there. What I did with Rocco, I had no clue what I was even doing. I just went everywhere with him. I thought it was cool for having him jump on mailboxes, putting stuff in trees. I just thought it was cool. And then when we figured out, oh, he can actually do some work work, then everything just transferred right over because he already liked me. He already had the ability. And now it was just pinpointing it to exactly what I needed him to do. There you go. <clears throat> there you go. I need to get better endurance. <laughs> Directions, everything, people. <laughs> have realistic goals don't rush look it that, look at that focus already look at that that focus already <laughs> i love that people gotta leave them eyes too you look like a light <laughs> <laughs> look at them eyes people and then make your dog work for stuff because if you're always feeding him bites when he's on the ground or not making him work or miss or jump over stuff when he actually has to do it he's going to get discouraged yeah. so you start it early and he teaches him this is just the basics yeah. <laughs> climbing stairs ladders tires since he was what three weeks old <laughs> hey literally him on the a-frame at two weeks I'm to a, eat <laughs> i'm gonna put i'm gonna put him i'm gonna put these dogs i'm gonna show y'all the hill and everything that we go build i build all kinds of stuff me and jamarcus when it's time to go into that weapon box and then you say how do you get them dogs to do such as a nope bite, 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 bite. Come, on, come on come on there you go good <laughs> gotta get your dog leaving the ground man and then, and then, hey what age they say do you start doing protection work <laughs> Shit, early yeah I mean, you can realistically introduce them to stuff at what you had the sack in there five, six weeks. Yeah, at four weeks so old, I'll be honest. Uh, you know, once he started moving around and knowing kind of where his legs was at, I'd put, I'd literally lay a whole thing on the side of the bed, and I'd have a little burlap sack uh, taped up, and I would just harass him with it. Mm -hmm. So he'd been biting on that thing since he was four weeks old uh, in the bed, and that's just to be like, oh, I wonder if he's interested in it. And now he's super interested, so you just keep working through the toys. Yep. And then taking him in situations, we watched him climb a tree at eight weeks. <laughs> um, and then don't let them get bored with it. So with this sack here, since he's starting to chew on it, we would just tease him up, tease him up, and then we put it up. So now he has interest and this builds drive because every time that you see these dogs come out, they're looking for something to do. We don't want them to get bored. <laughs> <laughs> see, this is what you want. He want to keep going, to keep going. You don't want to get the dog bored with any of this. It's just like if you started doing sports and you had to do it every day and you didn't like it, you're not gonna want to continue to do it. Yeah. yeah. And then harass your dog, man. Get up there, get him pushing him around. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? You gonna keep coming back? You gonna keep coming back? Yeah, boys. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Good. That level of focus, people. And again, once we get a couple of good bites and put them up, why he came out and jumped on it, I tell people for the first year, they own a tight regimen. It's in and out the cage. It gets about 30, 45 minutes to an hour where they get to play with the other dogs. It's, it's developing our process, making sure they get with the program. Because every dog, ain't no dog sitting around my house. Ain't no dog sitting around here. Oh, he will in due time. I'm thinking about it. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Get him, boy. Good stuff, but, but I tell you one thing, people, the trick to actually training a dog isn't sit, stay down, like those are tricks. Training a dog is really working through its behavior. That's what makes guys like Stan, uh, you know, key. And all the tricks actually lead to better control, impulse control. Hey, I got a dog jumping. I got a dog biting. I got a dog doing this. Impulse control. You got to redirect and all that other good stuff. But anywho, stay tuned and take care of your dogs, people. You got the gist of it. Yes! Oh, <laughs> you got the gist of it. Stan just got here. We got uh, a lot of work to do. Uh, the weight question. I don't really, I only weigh the dogs at times to know what they need, but Bam Bam eat once a day. He ain't look like he's losing no weight, does he? <laughs> he's thick as a brick. Um, but weight doesn't matter to me. I got 10 years of, of, of life with him, and we got a lot of, lot of stuff to accomplish, to say the least. So how much he weigh? It's at least my concern personally. His size don't matter to me. Color, mind you, I'm not, the, the Merles are pretty. I don't want one of them things. I got a Merle. I can inject Merle at any moment of time because of ego. That's what I keep telling them. Like, hey, you gotta keep one. I don't, who cares? I can, I just showed you that at any moment I can make a Merle litter. It's that simple. Freeze a couple straws. I can do it a thousand more times if I so chose. It's just a color. I need a dog that has will. Will to work. Ain't that right, Bam Bam? <laughs> like, yeah, all right, let's go. My man, uh, there's a mix between cooked and raw. That's what we feed. So at any hoop, we're probably about to go live on TikTok here in a second once I go check out. Um, you know what, I'll finish this by showing you the pups. Hey, go ahead and put him up and bring Cha-Cha out and then make sure you write down